All right, so this is October 26th, Bangladesh, 25th, USA. It's class number 17 in women's issues, and it's about Persephone, the victimization of women, uh, especially violence against women. Um, and this is our second day uh, on the victimization problem. The previous day we did the goddess. We did her before male patriarchy, and then we did what happened after patriarchy took over. Um, and today we're doing, we're going to have three rounds, all right? Three rounds where each of you speaks. And I will write down if you came prepared or not. Um, you don't need to explain to me, you know, why you're not prepared. You can put it in the chat if you want, but I'm not going to read those till the, till the class is over because I cannot divide my attention. Also, if you have to hand in something late, I tend to be generous, but please don't send me an email. I absolutely cannot keep it all straight. Just write it when you post it, write it at the beginning of the post or write it in the comment section. I'm leading it, right? I, I, uh, my classes are pretty flexible, but still you have to stay on task. And so uh, if it's more than a week late, right? I have said that if it's more than a week late, like 10 days late or more, then I am going to start grading them down unless you have a reason because I ended up reading 78 posts and the last week of class in one of my classes because students delayed and delayed and delayed and they told me I never had any time to do it. And all of a sudden they had enough time to do eight posts. And that's just, that's not honest, right? You're not being honest with me at that point. So that's why I do have this policy now because I need to read them. I need to have time to read them. I need to stay caught up so that I don't, you know, get stuck with 80 posts to read and I have other obligations. Um, so I honestly, most of you have a lot of obstacles. I'm not um, going to add to that. I, I am willing to be flexible, but I do have to keep you, you know, keep you going. And I do want you to keep up just so you can learn from the material. Um, also, it's much better for you to have notes before class, during class, because otherwise you have to go back over the video again to do your post, and that is a huge waste of time. So, um, so just try to get to class. Um, definitely try to read before class so you have something that you're prepared. Make sure to take notes during class. There you've got a third of your post done. If you can just after class, write your takeaway quickly, just the first version of it anyway, you won't have to go back. You might wanna polish it up a little bit later. And I do want you to start polishing your English. Uh, right, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna start being more insistent if the English is sloppy, right? You can go to the writing center. You can do it earlier, you know, right after class. Today, do it by tomorrow. Try to ask the writing center. I understand that people are trying to get a tutor and they're not able to get one. So um, if you can't get one within a week, you'll just have to post it. When it comes to the papers, that's that's kind of the most important time to work with a tutor. Um, all right, so Jacinta, I did. I am going to be able to to count you in. Um, so I think I've got everybody. And at the end of the class, I will 
say the names of the students that I seem to be absent, just to confirm that. So we're gonna have three rounds, where the first round is your reaction to the reading for today. The second round is the data that you collected, the information about how widespread are these abuses. Uh, it could be rape, it could be pornography, it could just be sexual assault, it could be um, honor killing, you know, whatever it is, some kind of a serious violence against women. Um, and then the third round will be if you brought a poem about rape. I remember when I was your age, there were no poems. There were almost, there were not very many poems about women that were written by women, for women, about women. It's amazing to me when I think back of, I took a poetry class. I don't think we read one poem by a woman. And I remember this poem, it's very famous. It's called To His Coy Mistress. And so this guy is trying to get this girl to sleep with him. And he just says, oh, you're being so coy and, you know, blah, blah. And, it, and when I think about it, what the heck? Like, why did I have to read that garbage? That's just garbage. Like, it's molding me, you know? My emotions have got formed by these images that I think are really perverted, frankly. <laughs> And so I do want, when I started reading poetry by women, for women, about women, especially rape poems, and I had a student write, she had written a poem about her own rape, and it was a really good poem. <laughs> um, maybe I'll, I can attach it. I didn't attach it because it's kind of long and I, you know, you all should be able to bring your own poems. Um, but there's, it's just, here's another problem that I had. That woman, I had two students and both of them had been raped, but both of them, when I assigned uh, this assignment, Andrea Dworkin, they were really vehemently against her. They just didn't like her. They had heard about her. They didn't like what she said. And they had this idealized idea of feminist porn, okay? And so it's women with agency, women taking control of their lives and running businesses of porn and using men, you know, to make money. But I mean, both of those women had been raped. They both had serious depression problems. They both had mental breakdowns. One of them quit school. One of them had a breakdown right before she was going to graduate. She procrastinated. And I, you know, I appealed to the administration, but I just, based on my experience, anecdotal evidence, and based on, uh, I, I just, I'm not convinced that that's a sign that women have, you know, the empowerment of women, that they can, you know, make gobs of money and pornography. Uh, but that's a debate and I'm pretty old fashioned. Um, but definitely I would say that wouldn't be where I would want to plant my flag, right? To me, equality in education, right? Because education is the tool out. And so that's what we have been talking about, right? Right from junior high, high school, when women go into puberty and they get taken out of school. That, that to me is where the rubber hits the road because if women don't get educated, they have no way to um, support themselves, they, they let themselves be abused, right? Because they don't, they can't envision being able to get out and be independent. Um, so that's mostly 
I have been amazed at how my students are willing to really commit to this as an important feminist empowerment. But I'm not going, you know, my main issue is education. And um, I guess the women in your generation can just work that out among you. <laughs> but I would say, don't let it divide you. That's another big problem is that, okay, so let's say a woman does get raped, right? Or she considers it rape, right? Okay, so first of all, it's the, the trauma of the experience. Then it's that the, the guy who did it denies it, right? He doesn't think it was rape. And, and so then he, he might not think so because it wasn't that violent. It, he might not think so because he'd say, but you agreed to it. You know, it's not my fault. It's your fault. So she gets blamed by the guy, right? Then she might go home to her mother. Or she might go tell a friend. And again, she might not get support from her parents if you know they'll just say your fault uh you shouldn't have been there you shouldn't have dressed like that it's your husband blah blah right then she tries to go to a lawyer right maybe she's privileged enough she can try to get her rights technically she has rights let's just put it that way that she has it According to the law, she has a right. Okay. She tries to get a lawyer, maybe a lawyer. I'm not taking that case, right? That'll ruin my reputation as a lawyer. Men won't come to me with their other legal issues because I went and defended this woman who claimed she was raped, right? So a lawyer won't take it because their legal practice will suffer. Maybe there are some feminists lawyers, right? Women? Well, then they take it to court, but the jury or the judge uh, decides against the, the case because of the application, right? Maybe it's technically against the law, but you didn't convince me. You didn't give sufficient evidence. Well, now this young woman has a reputation for thinking she's good enough to take some guy to court. So now she, you know, she's probably unmarriable or whatever. And, and then the other thing that happened was Andrea Dworkin and Catherine McKinnon were trying to get cities or states to have statutes, to have laws that would make pornography illegal because it created this climate of inti intimidation. It created a climate where women were more likely to be abused. And so there is in the article at the end of the Dworkin, and I, you didn't have to read all of that, of course, but right at the end, there's some news articles. And the city of Minneapolis, they were demonstrating to get the statute in. And I actually lived in Minneapolis when this was happening. So I do remember this. Well, you can tell from her essays that there were liberal lawyers, male and female, who just thought it's clearly a case of free speech and you can't make it illegal. Um, because if you make this illegal, you'll have to make some other stuff illegal. Um, but she was not convinced, right? She was, she's arguing, you can tell the difference between violent pornography and there's a distinction amongst pornographers of erotica and thanatos, okay? So the pornography where she's taking pleasure in being hurt, that's the violent kind, right? Whereas the erotica is that she takes pleasure in being what? 
the erotica would be like Cosmopolitan magazine or Playboy or something like that. Um, and of course, Andrea Dworkin <laughs> is not fine, but a lot of lawyers, they won't touch it. They won't touch it. It's a First Amendment issue. So, so not only do you have all these experiences, but you get criticized for trying to speak out. Okay, another issue is that um, the, okay, the law in the United States, and I don't know what the laws in your country are, but uh, you, until 1994, which isn't that long ago, um, you could not claim that you were raped by your husband. Okay, there was no rape within marriage, which means that when you sign the marriage contract, you basically give your body to your husband to do whatever he wants. And um, so in 1994, the law passed that a woman could take her husband to court for rape. Well, there's 50 states in the US, 38 states have this law that says if a wife takes her husband he'll he'll get amnesty he'll get forgiven for it <laughs> which basically means they overturn the law um so if you live in any of those states basically if you got married in that state or you're living in that state you might as well forget it. Your husband can do whatever he wants. So I'm not quite sure if the rest of you, you know, what the situation is in your countries. And then I'm not quite sure if you're surprised about the U.S. or not. Um, I think the laws are more um, complex and subtle in Europe because in general, their laws are more engaged with the quality of life, whereas the US has this minimal government interference um, sort of attitude. But anyway, so all, with all that said, which is quite a lot, but I hope it's worthwhile, we'll go for the first round, which is your reaction after reading the assignment for today. So Fayaza, what was your reaction? Uh, professor, I got uh, so surprised with her story. Like um, I, I was thinking about the law reforms and all, like uh, why the laws are so weak and all. Okay, good. Um, good. Did you, do you know if the laws are weak in your country? Sorry, Professor, what? Do you know what the laws are in your country? Um, uh, professor, uh, I, I know a bit, but I, I, I don't have the, that much deeper. Uh, the, um, okay, I mean, you might wanna look it up. Yeah, I'm glad you were surprised. I think that's, that's part of the learning process, right? And this is you. so hidden. It's so few people really know what's going on. Why is that patriarchy, I think? Um, Risti, what about you? Uh, Professor, first of all, I want to thank you that <clears throat> for giving us this topic because you know previously I don't know about uh, I don't know a lot of uh, about um, pornography. I mean we don't even think of that being in a village. So people are not aware of it, but now after reading this, after reading this uh, article, I uh, I would uh, I'm, I mean I'm able to know about the laws of our country. I mean, I'm focused on the law because uh, all people, you know, are. I mean, there is no way to, you know, disagree with the law of our country. So for the data, uh, I mean, for the second round, uh, I will talk about the laws of our country. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Melanie, what about you? Um, 
unfortunately I knew like a lot of the information on there just because I've read about you know pornography and rapes and all of that and the U.S. kind of just has a lot of information out about that already um and then something I wanted to add that I agreed with is that pornography is directly related to um like the violence against women like people get pleasure out of that and that's just I don't know it's disgusting <laughs> so you think there would be a correlation um I don't know if there would be a correlation but I I think it's just a weird coincidence I don't know I would have to read more into it really right it was just that you were surprised how disgusting the content is yeah yeah okay. and the stories especially yeah I I could uh scan the Glenn Hedges article too if you want to read it it's got it's very similar he just is a journalist and so he interviews particular women um Anyway, uh, Fatima, what about you? Hello, Professor. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, that much idea about pornography. Uh, so, uh, Did you have a reaction you... when you read about it? It seems like you would have had some kind of emotional reaction, but okay. Okay, Roshani. Yes, Professor. Uh, uh, yes, Professor. So uh, for me as well, when I read it, I feel like, um, the laws are not as strong enough. And even in my context, like when I went through the, you know, some laws and uh, laws related to rape and all, it was so misleading and so mis misinterpreted uh, till now, which, um, which, is, which seems very, you know, uh, which is very like, problematic, which seems very unfair to the people who, you know, goes and file for the case relating to the laws. Okay, good. Toma. Yes, ma'am. What was uh, your reaction? I, Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. When I read about the uh, story, I get very emotional uh, because it's all about women when they are suffering, but they do not get any chance to um, get um, any proper laws which can help them to protect um, themselves. And uh, and I found the laws are, I also found the laws are very weak, so which cannot work for very effectively to um, protect, uh, to help to overcome their issues. So that's my reactions. Okay. Were you surprised at how weak the laws are in the U.S.? Yes, ma'am. I surprised. Yeah. Okay. Because U.S. is a developed countries, but the laws yeah. are. Okay. That that was a point. I was wondering what you would think. Um, Habiba. Yes. Yes, professor. What was your reaction when you read it? Okay, after reading this story, uh, my reaction was very emotionally and sad because uh, uh, this story is depend on to tell our country uh, which is hap uh, happening now. So do you read a lot about it in your country too? Is it in the news very much? Yes, professor. Good. Um, Nizali? Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, as uh, many of my friends say, I also rise and we are not uh, very aware about this topic because we 
we normally talk about the many uh, women's issues like uh, uh, winning equal rights and uh, all others but uh, normally uh, i didn't heard about this topic very much so i used to i used to uh, see my uh, how the laws are in my country uh, then i could find that uh, there are laws like very uh, very very bad and very not fair so there are some laws that uh, the rape offense is not really applied to include uh, a penovirginal uh, penetration only uh, the other forms of sexual penetration are covered under the crime of uh, grave sexual abuse uh, which carries the same penalties as rape and uh, Sri Lanka law uh, provides that consent is immaterial in cases of uh, sexual violence with the person in detention and consent is immaterial in situations where the victim is incapable of giving consent uh, such as under soundness of mind and intoxication and in marital rape uh, there is a law that explicitly permits uh, marital rape unless the parties are judicially separated. So I was surprised on seeing laws and uh, we can see that even though there are laws uh, like that uh, people still have barriers to access the uh, justice uh, within the criminal justice system. So uh, because of many reasons like uh, there are uh, huge corruption among uh, law enforcement officials and uh, there are many failures of the police to when it goes to the register a case and there, it takes so much time and delays in investigations. So yes, I feel I have to look uh, for more details about this topic. Yeah. Okay, good. Very good. Um, Trin. Yes, Professor, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, um, as I read in those, for me, I'm not surprised. And when I'm comparing in Vietnamese situation, I think it's uh, not better. Uh, and I, I found that um, there are numerous level of loopholes in my Vietnamese law about this phenomenon. Um, and I did some research to find some information about this situation. Uh, so would you like to hit now? Um, you can wait. I guess the first round is just your reaction. Okay. If you were surprised about how much there is, how much money people spend or how violent it is, or um, Andrea Dworkin was really mocked out and criticized and ridiculed by so many people. Um, so what was yeah. your first reaction? I feel like, yeah, I'm surprised. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's so the you... first feeling. Okay, so you thought America might be a little better than that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, so. we, I mean, uh, we're very glamorized. You know, we, we're very good advertisers. People have, you know, fantasies about America, I think, because we can sell our product pretty well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're like a brand. Um, Mahira. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I was not surprised because this is a daily matter in Bangladesh. Uh, and uh, But I felt bad for that. Uh, again, speaking about uh, pornography, it's not legal in Bangladesh that I can say. And marital rape is not a thing. If you say about marital rape, then the, they will react like you, you have come from another world. Uh, and <laughs> about uh, the law enforcement, uh, if you uh, if a girl is raped under 18 then you have minimum imprisonment imprisonment of 15 years and then if it's a little girl then uh, you have um, imp imprisonment of 20 years and then if the victim dies then uh, during rape uh, the imprisonment is 25 years but i don't think uh, the law is enforced because now and then i hear so many cases, like 90-year-old woman raped by 14-year-old boy, 
two year old baby was raped by his her own uncle so uh, you have to prove that uh, uh, the girl's family has to prove that she they are wrong and something really uh, bad happened to them then only the law is enforced or not that is not a guarantee also so like and that's not a also yeah. yes can i add something with the with mahira like uh, for the first uh, in our country most of the time the girls family members uh, uh, do not want to prove that like they don't like to prove that they like uh, her uh, their uh, like girls was raped by someone like they don't like to do that they don't That's want the public true. to know yes okay it gives the family a bad reputation or something like that yeah, yeah okay yes. yes professor the family is dishonored right um, yes Most of the time it was happened are there any honor killings in bangladesh anymore and uh, what honor killings are where a girl gets raped and the family is so humiliated that they, I mean, it used to be that they would stone her to death publicly, uh, but it's just that she could get killed without anybody, you know, prosecuting. But that was, you know, I hope those things don't exist anymore. Again, it would be, it would be in very rural areas. It would be really poor people. And it would be if she got raped, even by her, her brother's friend or her uncle, she was no longer marryable and they were too poor to take care of her and she couldn't go to work. So that was it, like she had to die. So I don't know if you hear about those, but again, I don't want to stereotype. Uh, it's possible it never happens anymore. It's just, I did want you to know about in the past how outrageous that was and yet if people are desperate and that's the normalized way to deal with the situation it was normalized you know um all right so let's go to marzia uh yes professor a uh, professor sorry for a few minutes just one minute because i don't know what uh, yes, Professor. Uh, professor, uh, can you hear me now? Uh, just barely. It's pretty. I could hear you at first. And now? Better. Okay. Uh, professor, uh, uh, by, by reading this article, uh, you know that uh, it was somehow I didn't uh, know much about this, about the pornography. So by reading the article, I really, really feel sad. PTS and also uh, like somehow shocked for women because uh, what I understood is that the overall overall what happens is the, the main victim is women and when by reading this article and thinking about my country the situation of women so uh, uh, it is it is really uh, like a disaster because in my in my uh, like in, in my country uh, like women, women cannot talk because uh, the society uh, will judge them, and also their family will not support them uh, because it will somehow dishonor their family. And also, as Mahira said about, about the, like a uh, marriage, uh, a marriage rape, a woman cannot uh, never cannot even talk about it because this is a taboo. And if she ever talks about it, uh, like uh, people will. Uh, because they will say people believe that when a, a married woman is completely a belonging belongs to her husband and her and her husband will do anything because she is married and she is a woman and her husband has the rights so she never can talk about it uh, but um, uh, uh, but about the like uh, the girls, women, when I when I searched about this, like in Afghanistan, women cannot talk about this because if they talk, it will somehow uh, 
uh, a fixed deal position in the society. If a girl stop being uh, that she was uh, like sexually abused, I said that the society have another like the society's uh, perspective will change uh, on here, and they will say, "Wow!" Like somehow judge that this girl is like this. This girl was a like they will have another vision yeah. yeah this is how like women come not uh, like uh, last night i watched a, a report by al jazeera news which uh, which was really sad for me as an afghan woman like women cannot talk if they talk they are not supported by their own family and also the law will not support them because mostly women in such situations face lack of evidence they cannot prove it yeah and also and also, like, they have nothing to support them to prove it. Their family will not help them to find proofs. The law also will not support them. Like, uh, in such a situation, women, uh, that woman is completely alone. She can't do it. So I think the, uh, the reason that also most of women are quiet about this and do not talk is that they have no supporters. Yeah. Okay. We we have to move on, but yeah, I I I can imagine that's true. Um, Taslima, what have you got? Yes, ma'am. After reading this article, uh, I feel very sad and emotion because I hear some uh, some information from my country. Yeah, it is happening in my country. That's why. It's like uh, related with this article. Okay, so, all right. So we'll do the second round, what you came up with in your research. Um, so Kasturi, what about you? What was your first reaction to the reading? Uh, professor, first of all, I felt sad. And at some point I also felt angry <laughs> because like, <clears throat> Uh, reading the article, uh, I found uh, like <clears throat> females are treated as whores and uh, as a whore, they uh, deserve to be dominated and uh, abused, uh, which I don't think is true because like uh, being a, a female, I think that a female is also a human being and uh, uh, each and every human being deserves uh, to be treated equally with equity. So uh, it made me sad, in fact. Okay, good. Um, Rafa? Rafa is from Yemen, and Yemen has the worst, some of the worst uh, statistics on women. I think it's the biggest gender gap uh, for 13 years or something. So Rafa, are you there or you just can't? Um, okay, I will check the chat. When we get through the first round, I will check the chat in case there's people who just had to type. Uh, Rahima? Yes, ma'am. Uh, listening all of other stories, I can really relate to a movie named Kabil, a Bollywood movie, where exactly the story was uh, uh, given that how after a rape, women cannot prove that she got raped, she was raped. Because of the, like, uh, first of all, there is a lot of humiliation from society and all, and there is no support for her. And then uh, they can't prove because after 20, uh, maybe after 25, uh, four hour, uh, there is some medical term that uh, it cannot be proven that the girl was uh, raped. So there the story was uh, given how uh, after a rape, women cannot really prove that they, uh, they were raped. So, and the uh, laws against uh, rape is so, again, rape is so weak. And about pornography, everyone knows about this, but uh, in our culture, no one really talks about this. And uh, uh, frequently I'm saying that I was really not aware of the pornography uh, after a long time back. Recently, I'm knowing about this. I, I got really shocked about the uh, uh, laws in USA. And uh, how can I imagine that in our country, there will be a strong law? 
even whenever I search about, like when I directly search about what is the laws against pornography in Bangladesh, I just got it's uh, prohibited in Bangladesh. There is no strict rule. Like the first sentence was it's prohibited. So it's like uh, everyone, uh, the mother also uh, uh, said their child, don't do this. This is a prohibition. It's like whatever we prohibit, that work was uh, done uh, more, much more. I think so. So it's like that. So it is prohibited in the law in Bangladesh? Yeah, I, I, I just searched on Google. I just got okay. the first sentence. It was prohibited. But people use it even more? I think so. And I think in the youngers, it's uh, uh, much more risk, you know? Like, they don't, uh, uh, the older don't really know, don't really talk about this. But the youngers are really involved. Yeah, okay. Um, I did have a student, we were talking about this in class, um, about the profit motive. So Mr. Hedges, it's all about how America is just saturated in greed. But there was a, a kid who said he had been addicted to pornography when he was 15, 16. He really had an addiction, like he couldn't stop watching it because it gave him a certain pleasure. And his father had abandoned him. And I mean, he had a lot of other issues, right? So it was just, it was pretty amazing to me because I read about this and here's a kid right in class saying this. So yeah, it's a big problem for younger kids. Um, Jacinta? Yes, Professor. Uh, when I read the article, I feel so sad because uh, I uh, we know that America is an, uh, uh, a developed country. Um, so the law uh, we are so uh, weak, like uh, uh, like my country that we have many laws uh, uh, against uh, rape, but that's not applied. To, uh, uh, and um, uh, especially for uh, women like you, when they raped, uh, 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 they uh, they are not uh, getting their uh, uh, proper rights. Uh, that uh, and uh, and uh, if they are raped, there has no proof that they uh, uh, they cannot give their proof that she has raped. And um, and, uh, and and family uh, and uh, society uh, will uh, own support uh, uh, the uh, girls. Uh, so uh, girls family don't uh, uh, girls family don't want uh, to uh, uh, take uh, 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 to take uh, loss or. Uh, Attack! Uh, uh, don't uh, don't want to uh, share um, by legally like they don't want to share a, a police uh, uh, or they just keep uh, uh, the uh, the uh, their okay uh, that's that's fine um, okay so here's. And we just have Pooja left, I think. Go ahead, Pooja. Hello, Professor, and hello, everyone. So when when the topic was, you know, about the porn pornography, so before reading to the text, I quickly jumped into the Google because uh, the word pornography is, I, I find very interesting to, talk about and know about and I went uh, to the Google and search you know how many percentage of adults or um, youth like us search about this and I not surprisingly I found that 70 percentage of adults we do about we do search about this uh, topic but when it when it is about you know talking about uh, this topic to the uh people around us or with the family we you know hesitate to talk about and then um, then after that uh when i got to realize and when i got 
the percentage of um, you know when i so, saw the data which was there in a uh, few of the studies that has been done and then i came to the paper that we had we were supposed to read and then uh, i i saw the countries were mentioned and i was like no it must be you know like it's only in the country like nepal that we don't talk about or you know like mm, the topic itself is like very open to other countries and other countries like a developed country like us and then when i was going through it i didn't go all but like when i go, go, was going through it i was like a uh, same cases kind of here like like the law are not strict and when we talk about nepal in like nepal uh, lacks the law uh, implementations which is related to you know like this pornography or like rape which is two different things however so i was you know surprisingly you know trying to find out the similarities and differences between the two kind of issues and i was like finding some most of the case, most of the issues similar to my country when i saw the laws were not implemented and not used in a proper way so that's all about the first jackson professor okay all right so we've had round 1 Professor, um, I'm also left. Well, okay, uh, you were you spoke before, but okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, I want um I want to uh, like <clears throat> say that when I read this article, I was <clears throat> so sad and emotional because it was related to a woman and. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, i was so surprised because uh, uh, the american is, america is a developed country the law is like so weak and uh, but in our country the pornography law is uh, somehow uh, like strict um, than america and also like uh, but uh, uh, in bangladesh there is no uh, like uh, law um, about the maternal rape uh, no one uh, talk about this so that's all okay thank you yeah okay um so i have one question for you to keep in the back of your mind um i think when it comes to education of girls things will change quite a bit in your lifetime. And there are other things where it will change quite a bit. But what about this? Is this ever going to get better, right? Porn and rape. Um, those are things that are seem so intractable. And, um, but it's up to you. I mean, that's just an open question and it's something that's different, right? There will be more women leaders of more women exercising power. It still won't be equal. There will be more women being able to be more assertive. There will, you know, this stuff. But what about this really dark stuff? Um, that's what I'm just going to leave as an open question. Um, so the second round is that if you went to find something about data, in your country, right? How many women they think actually got raped, whatever kind of data that you might have found. Uh, what did you come up with, Fayaza? Uh, professor, I have the data until 2013. Okay. Um, uh, it is, I have noted down. Uh, the data was like uh, telling in 2013 it is uh, uh, minus 1.85 point like uh, 85 it's changed but it's 10.6 uh, the total cases of uh, until uh, that it was like 
around thousand seven hundred and ninety two cases, the rape cases. But uh, it it was increased when uh, the during the war period. Uh, that was like many of the Tamil women's are uh, rape. Like the most of the cases are recorded. Okay. That's it. okay. Um, Priesty, did you come up with something you read? Uh, yeah, Professor. So, so I have uh, written a uh, sorry. I read an article on our uh, newspaper uh, named the Daily Star, and uh, from there I found that uh, from 2012, uh, the government of Bangladesh has. Uh, forbidden the pornography when pornography control act has been passed so uh, to what produce distribute or to process uh, pornography is against the law of bangladesh uh, besides to uh, create safe law to bangladesh and secure internet space for all on january 1st 2017 uh, our government launched an anti-porn campaign uh, through which it has blocked uh, 22,000 porn sites in the uh, last three years. I mean, for maybe 2017, 18, and 19. Uh, but this process wasn't very effective on Bangladesh internet users uh, due to, you know, visit the other pornographic websites uh, and uh, the offender can be uh, sanctioned with two years of imprisonment along with a fine of one lakh taka. And when after blocking the major porn sites, which was uh, 22,000, the Minister of Post and Telecommunication and ICT said that uh, they are facing a lot of challenges because everyday new sites are being launched. And additionally, the extremely uh, addicted people to pornography access the blog sites, even using the apps uh, named VPN. And uh, BTRC, uh, the Bangladesh Telecommunication Regulatory, uh, Le Regulatory Commission, truly said that except blocking more websites, uh, there is no way to control the pornography on the internet. Uh, however, they are working on using uh, artificial intelligence and designing new software to track and identify the users of porn and producers. Okay, good. So this is interesting because it's a different philosophy. And in general, in developing countries, the governments are given more ability to affect the society and the culture. The United Nations, I mean, the United States is notoriously uh, focused on minimum government intervention. So I think that that's interesting. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's important. It's a general trend. And um, uh, that was good. That's, that's, <laughs> that is interesting stuff. It would never happen in the US. Um, no. Yeah, okay, Melanie, it's your turn. So you can contrast that. I mean, in the US, everybody talks about it all the time. They talk, 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 but no laws. Okay, so Melanie, what's your take? What's so I found an article and something I found surprising was that almost 90% of the pornography um, scenes in the US contain physical aggression and nearly 50% contain verbal aggression. And so as young boys um, like grow up seeing this and they're getting younger and younger as the years go on because of the internet, they grow up and this kind of rewires their brain and their perceptions of how women are supposed to be viewed and how they're supposed to look. And this kind of makes it seem like it's okay to be sexually aggressive towards women. And another thing that was mentioned in this article that I found crazy is that um, 
the U.S. produces about 55% of child pornography. Ew. Yeah. And hold on. I'm finding one more statistic that I found. Oh, and there was actually a 35% increase from 2017 to 2018 in the U.S. Oh, of God. confirmed reports of child sexual abuse images. And it's one of the fastest growing online businesses. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Somebody I knew ended up on, um, actually, he was, he was the person I hung out with my sophomore years in college because he had, he knew my fiance and we, and my fiance was far away. So I would talk to this kid about and my boyfriend, obviously. Well, it turns out he was a pianist. He was small, he was short, he was gentle, tempered. He was a very good piano player. He went to the Oriental Hotel in Thailand, I think. It's a world famous hotel, has like eight grand pianos, all these rooms. Well, he turned out he was on America's Most Wanted and he was on that TV show because he was running a child sex ring. Like he went out on a little like um, trailer with his piano and he would entertain people and then in the back room he would kids would be having sex and so finally he got caught and um he was you know caught in thailand and i would imagine he got in prison i would imagine he got tortured <laughs> i don't know you know do whatever you want with those as far as i'm concerned but i mean his mother was an artist his father was a PhD, the Dean of Albion College. I mean, the, the kid had culture, right? Oh, it was so shocking. But it turns out that's rather common that a lot of child abusers are highly educated men who think this is gentle sex, right? It's gentle and it's not hurting the kids. Oh, <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I wasn't going to tell that because I don't want students to think, Dr. Beck, are you a pervert or something? Um, actually, what I am is incredibly naive, right? I'm not a good judge of character, but I can tell you that he wasn't doing that when he was, the years he was, because I mean, he, there wasn't any access, but I am just a horrible judge of character. And I, I've found out I really have to be very careful to trust people because I'm pretty naive. I don't see the dark side of people very well. Um, so uh, that said, Roshani, what about you? Hello, yes, Professor. So. Um... I studied the rape cases in Nepal since it is one of the highest, uh, as the pornography is already banned, but um, the cases, uh, you know, the pornography was banned because uh, it was said that the causes of uh, pornography leads to uh, rape, actually. With an increasing number of rape, uh, the porn site was banned. So I observed like what cases of uh, rape are there in Nepal, rape cases are there in Nepal. So I found that on average, four to five cases are filed every day in Nepal, which is just filed, but there are also other unknown cases which are not yet filed because of the family pressure, societal taboos and so many things. And on the beginning of the lockdown, suicide and uh, rape cases was highest among other crimes where two girls were raped in a daily period and mental touches and everything by their own family members actually. And um, uh, that time, uh, the province number five, which is the state Kathmandu state uh, which it it recorded the highest and uh, yearly like 200 cases of uh, 
200 cases of rape were recorded, just recorded, but I know like there are many which are still uh, yet to be discovered. And from the latest data, it, it's found that 60% of rape victims are below the age of 15, uh, which is like around 11 to 15. And uh, overall, like uh, the people who are being raped are found to be from six months to 75 years old women, which is um, very, very, very sad, very, um, you know, it's, I we can't even imagine raping a girl, uh, uh, being very, you know, age or even out of any ages. So uh, yeah, 700 cases, rape were attempt, uh, like on the other last last fiscal year, like 700 rape cases were, attempt, uh, were filed and attempt rape uh, cases were even more, um, that was recording Nepal, recording Nepal, and I feel very sad. Like there, though there are so many rape cases, like the problem solving is like very less. Only few of the a few of the culprit gets punished, and even <coughs> if they get punished, they get like they get out of the jail from like just around some few months or some few times just by you know, giving some money, some corruption and all. Uh, I just wanted to share the one uh, cases, uh, one very popular cases, um, which was very uh, clear, which was very visible to all the public, to all the people, but yet there was no justice. And it's none other than Nirmala Panta's case, which is, she is uh, absolutely, she is uh, from a poor family background, uh, with, who, is very, who was very um, talented, and was very talented in her study, but then she was being raped by her own, uh, not own family, but when she, she went to study in one of her friend house and she was being raped by her uh, friends, uh, like family members of her family, of, of her friend. And that case uh, got so hyped as it was so natural, so clear. And every everyone in the villages, everyone in the country actually knew about the cases, knew uh, like who was the culprit. Like it was visible, right? She went to that house and she was being raped and killed the next day eventually. So it was clear, but no, you know, no cases where no justice was made. Every time the police used to, you know, bring the person saying that uh, giving some, they used to give some money and say that, uh, say them to confront that as they have raped. But when all the test tests test were done, then the person uh, was found to be innocent and was left. So every time many of the person came as if they were the culprit but still the justice is denied there was a huge protest huge 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 protest and um, every every year the cases got uh, every year that case get into hype like get into uh, the uh, what do we say that um, the protest goes into the pick but since the government authorities has nothing to do like they have something to do they have like strong power but the investigation is very weak. The maybe they are from a higher, um, you know, they are in a high power. If the policeman does it, then there's no yeah. okay. case and something like that. Yeah. So that's something pathetic. And there are several cases which are not being recorded. And for the recorded ones, there is still not any justice. And you know, the the time you said that for the poor family, um, the families get pressure. Absolutely, here as well. Uh, for the that child, girl, child, uh, though their parents were struggling for her to get justice, uh, they their parents get so much threatened and so much. Um, uh, how do you say life threatening? Uh, like uh, from other people, higher authority that uh, that that um the her father's got like lost her uh mental power like uh, he had uh, gone through very mental stress and he had to you know uh, he he became a very different person as if he don't know anything and something like that the uh, the family were already poor and after that case all their expenses were you know uh all their uh, income were ex uh, expended for their called uh, for their child right and uh, lastly they went that ended up with just uh, losing her losing uh, her father's brain and it was very very critical but still justice is not in favor of them which is very pathetic which is very um, uh, i don't know what to say i don't have any words but yeah, i feel yeah. very bad i'm very sorry for for, for the society I'm living and for uh, not being able to, you know, 
do anything, not being able to, if don't know what, whom it happens next, right? But we just right. don't have anything. <laughs> the question would be, do you think it'll ever change? Um, yeah. That's just something for you to think about. Maybe it will change if there's enough demonstrations or something, you know, but it's hard to know. Um, Habiba, did you find an article? Sir, but I didn't find regarding pornography. Okay. In Myanmar, uh, I found some rape cases. Uh, like uh, there are many, uh, there are many Rohingya harassment and sexual violence uh, in Myanmar. Uh, in 2000, in January 2018, uh, the Myanmar military and local uh, Rakhine population killed raps um, around 1,000, uh, 1,8,000 Rohingya women and girls. The rap survivor women who are from 19 different villages in Myanmar, mostly in northern, uh, like uh, in northern Butitong and Mount uh, this, rep uh, this report is uh, based on, on 52 uh, interview Rohingya women including uh, 29 survivor of uh, uh, rape survivor. Okay, good. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I've had others, other Rohingya students have talked about the violence. Um, Nizali? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, when, when I go to the statistics, I can see that from uh, 2012 to 2021 between those uh, eight years as the chief government stated uh, there are uh, there were 11,998 rape cases reported and 500 uh, sorry 5,891 child abuse cases and 4,806 serious sexual abuses report between those eight years and uh, the special thing is in the first five days of the year 2020, there were 142 incidents of rape and uh, 54 child abuses and 42 uh, serious sexual abuses are reported uh, in those 15 days uh, in the year 2020. And I want to say that all of these cases are which uh, reported in various police uh, divisions in the country. But there are many number of cases that are not reported uh, due to some uh, many reasons like, uh, as the ma'am said, uh, bad uh, dishonesty to the family or sometimes there are cases uh, whom they're engaged in those cases like political leaders or authorities. So they they force uh, the victims not to go for the processes of law. And uh, especially I want to say that in the war times, uh, like uh, 2009, there are a number of cases uh, which reported on the war areas as as uh, the, some articles is that soldiers uh, used uh, mostly uh, to watch porno, porn videos and use pornography as uh, uh, to avoid their stress uh, and such situations. So yeah okay good Ms. Ali good um Trin I uh, did some research and my first and only feeling is that I'm so disappointed in which I haven't noticed before about country situation and there we will a uh, huge need to be training our education and uh, the way how to train the social ideology and yeah, so here are some key information I, I found from my country is that sexual harassment is widely prevalent in Vietnam and with several studies showing that Vietnamese women are generally unsafe from this phenomenon. And the latest report found that 87% of interview women and girls had faced sexual harassment in public place. No detailed numbers, Professor, except for dry sexual exploitation. Uh, but you know, it's just a tip of the iceberg because the real numbers are suspected to be much higher 
due yeah. to the culture of secrecy around abuse or fear of shame from the victims. Which that I found is really a very common point from my classmates so far that I, I was hearing uh, from students from the main uh, Afghanistan and Nepal that we are facing the same social ideology. Right. And this, this, this are numerous legal loopholes in the country's law because people who sexually harass, molest others, or perform sexual acts in the public could be fined in just only $13, the current maximum fine for these violations. $13, professor. <laughs> and I can give an example is that a man was fined just nine dollars after forcibly kissing a woman in an elevator in Hanoi and another man who grabbed a woman in central Wanan province while she was drying clothes on the street also got away with a meager just nine dollars fine. That's yeah. terrible. Oh, thank <laughs> yeah, yeah. you and I mean, yeah. yeah professor and Anna yeah. also the most common point with other countries that um, there are the, the investigations of sexual exploitation case in Vietnam still mostly rely on physical evidences. But bringing this evidence to trial would be difficult since we don't have the equipment to view or the press in them, right? That's it. the biggest yeah. <laughs> like a Yeah. It is nice to hear about each each student's country, right? So you can get this picture that, oh my God, it's global. Um, yeah, we are facing the same. We are facing right. the same. Taslima, do you have something? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, I found some data about my country. Um, yeah. Not about who. Uh, yeah, I just found about uh, three estates from my country. Uh, in 2015, uh, the rape cases was um, total 1,100 cases, including 429 uh, was adults, women, and 671 uh, were child victims. And since uh, 314 we are uh, like um, women. Which country? In Myanmar, sorry. Okay. In 2017, uh, there was a uh, reported, uh, um, yeah, 1,450 cases uh, uh, yeah, in both, uh, in uh, in the three estate, uh, Rekan estate and Sheng estate and Kayang estate, uh, total cases was uh, including adults, women, uh, 508 cases and uh, child victim was uh, 897 uh, cases. Each year uh, between 2007, uh, 16 and uh, 17, um, the number of uh, rest cases, yeah, the number of rest cases was uh, 305. Okay, okay. Um, the, you know, you can think a lot about how underreported it is, right? That I'm yes, sure yeah. there were may, way more than that. Okay, so in the US, for example, there's 100,000 a year reported, but it's underreported, right? And that's yeah. like 3,000 a year, a day. <laughs> so that's a lot, right? But um, still, it's way underreported. Uh, America has a lot of people, but still, it's, um, I'm sure that it's way underreported in developing countries, or women aren't even allowed to call it rape, right? You can't even think. In terms, that wasn't a rape. That was just a husband being a husband or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's hard to know what people think. Um, Kasturi, what have you got? Uh, professor, um, 
I actually uh, went uh, through some articles where it uh, says that chutti. Um, Oops, we lost her. Oh no! Sorry, professor. So uh, I actually went uh, through a uh, through an article uh, named "Rape Laws in Nepal Insufficient, Inconsistent, and." on enforced uh, before reading this article i was not uh, really aware of what rape meant as well because like here it mentions that um, uh, according to the section 219c of the 2017 criminal code of nepal uh, it says that penetration of penis into anus or mouth, penetration of penis to any extent into anus, mouth or vagina, insertion of any object other than penis in vagina shall also be considered to be rape. Uh, there are a lot of uh, laws um, made uh, for rape cases in Nepal, but then they are not implemented. Uh, uh, after the... Uh, COVID-19 uh, took place in Nepal, rape cases have been increased a lot, but then uh, none of the rape cases have been solved, which is a sad thing. And um, uh, I think that uh, some of the data might differ as uh, Rosni D and I might have visited different websites. So uh, if we are to look at the rape cases in Nepal at once, then uh, we can actually see that uh, in the fiscal year of 2019 to 20, uh, 2,144 rape cases were registered and 687 rape cases were attempted. Um, Similarly, in 2018-19 fiscal year, 2,230 rape cases were registered and 786 rape cases were attempted. So there are uh, a lot of data. And uh, the interesting thing that I found after going through the article is that uh, rape cases in Nepal, they are mostly... Um, uh, they mostly exist in the age group of uh, 11 to 15, which is a sad thing as well. And uh, it also states that uh, rape cases in <coughs> Nepal um, uh, actually exist from the age of six months to 70 years. Uh, uh, so six months, uh, when a child is six months here, um, I mean, when a baby girl is six months, she is uh, she is supposed to get uh, care and love from her parents. But then, uh, if she is raped, then um, there is high possibility of being a victim a victim of several diseases as well. And right, so, Actually, it's usually the dad that does it. He's the only one with access to the baby. Yeah, but no, uh, Professor, it's not uh, just the dad um, having access to the baby. Uh, uh, and during the COVID-19 pandemic, I mean, when, in the first phase, I uh, heard a news from India that the doctor himself, he raped a baby girl of two months. So uh, we think that, I mean, whatever we hear, whatever we think and whatever we see might not be the same as we expect sometimes. So it's quite weird uh, when we go through news articles, news um, and other stuffs related to pornography and rapes, it, it will sadden us a lot. Because like, uh, even though all, uh, even though most of the people in the country are educated and aware of what rape means, and uh, <laughs> but then uh, we we won't be able to enforce everything. I mean, we have a lot of laws regarding rape, right? But then, and none of these things have been implemented. Uh, if we look at the rape cases in Nepal during the pandemic, then. 
uh, Grolls of is 13, 17, 12, and I think 11, they were raped. And but then uh, uh, their parents and uh, relatives from their villages, they were uh, they protested a lot and uh, they raised voice for uh, justice to their uh, girl child. But then they have not been provided with justice at all. And uh, uh, so uh, I was not really aware of rape cases. Uh, before COVID-19 pandemic, I have to say, because like we were focused and concentrated on our own uh, academics. But then during the pandemic, I felt that um, rape cases mostly existed in the rural parts of Nepal, because in the rural parts of Nepal, most of the girls, they don't get access to education as uh, there will be many children in a family and uh, so uh, being many in numbers, uh, they are supposed to work. And uh, yeah, uh, since there will be a lot of children in one family, uh, it will be difficult for their parents to educate each of them. Thus, uh, they will get raped uh, whenever they go to work as well. So uh, it's my per uh, so uh, when I went to my village, I asked people like, uh, why do you get um, married at so early age? And they were like, whenever we go to workplace, I mean, uh, most of them they are engaged in agriculture, right? So they uh, go to collect woods and stuffs. So uh, during that phase, uh, they said that they fall in love. So I I think that. Um, due to illiteracy and awareness in uh, just in the rural paths okay in rural paths uh, most of the girls they get raped just because of unawareness about reproductive health and uh, illiteracy i feel so sad when i go through uh, this much uh, stops on the internet um yeah yeah, yeah. it's bad and um Actually, some of you were going to run out of time, but I'm putting your names down so that we can start out next time and everybody gets a chance. OK, I don't really like interrupting people, but um, uh, let's see. I, I talked too much at the beginning. Um, let's see. The other thing was, you know, rape is underreported. But I think if your daughter gets raped between age 11 and 15, that's why it gets reported, because now she's unmarriable, right? If people in the village know that. And so it's understandable that if it's a certain age girl, it's going to, you know, there is going to be this public outrage to make sure that, that people know she didn't agree to this so that she can still get married. Um, does that make sense, Kasturi? That there would be a, a motive? Um, yeah, I mean, anyway, which means there's really a lot more rapes than that. But those are the ones where the family's willing to go public because everybody sort of knows something happened and they have to make sure that the public knows it wasn't that the girl was being promiscuous. Um, Rafa, are you there? She wasn't there before. I don't know. Rahima, go ahead. Yes, Professor. Yeah, first I read an article from Dhaka Tribune. It's a uh, Bang like Bangladesh newspaper where I found like, this is a recent story about during this pandemic the rate uh, of uh, rape caves in Bangladesh, where I found that <clears throat> at least like four people are raped uh, in every day, like a, a day, day basis, and at least 29 people uh, died, uh, and five people uh, got committed suicide after being raped. This is the recent story of, uh, during the pandemic. It actually shows that uh, during the pandemic, the rape case has uh, rates have has been increased in our country. <clears throat> a total of six hundred and thirty two people, uh, thirty two uh, women were raped uh, between April to August this year. 
and uh, where uh, also were said uh, about the also was talked about the lack of justice. That's why the these rates are increasing. This was mentioned. <coughs> uh, this about the statistical report and another story I have I can say which is really uh, a bit ashamed. I uh, can I share actually one of my uh, cousin sister she got married and she's elder than me uh, but she's still uh, friendly with me she shares her story sometimes so one day recently she shared a story i was really shocked like uh, about her uh, marital relationship with her husband that uh, some whenever sometimes she don't want like uh, want to be intimated with her husband but it's like in every two days her husband wants her uh, in her bed in his bed something like that then she was telling me with a, a pity face that it's like uh, I have to manage his, I have to well, fulfill his, uh, how can I say, uh, something like that. I got, uh, I got really shocked, like how about the marriage life? I, I got scared about the marriage life. There was no you know, willing of girls as she was telling me. Yeah, that's okay. Um, no, no, that's that's good. I'm sure a lot of women feel that way, but they don't, you know, they're not allowed to say anything. Again, I I hope it changes. I just hope it changes, but I, I don't know. You guys know better than I do. Um, Jacinta, what about you? Did you find something? Um, professor, I got uh, uh, find data from uh, 2001 to 2020 that uh, Bangladesh ha Professor, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Uh, so I found that Bangladesh uh, is the second uh, highest prevalence of so uh, uh, sexual uh, in, uh, intimate partner uh, violence against women in the world. Uh, and uh, sixty percent of Bangladeshi men are found uh, performing violence behaviors, uh, uh, intimate their partners, and um, uh, in um, uh, Bangladesh human rights. Uh, according to Bangladesh human rights, it said that uh, forty thousand seven hundred eighteen victims. We are raped within the years of 2001 to 2019 in Bangladesh. And uh, the highest rape in incidents trend reported uh, 2001 to 2019 was between uh, 2002 to 2003. So uh, to, uh, uh, the highest uh, rape was 2001 to 2019. So it's increasing. Um, and uh, I found that uh, 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 the, um, um, uh, uh, the victims were reported compared to 2000, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in 2018, the victims were reported about uh, 635. Uh, so uh, um, uh, in Bangladesh, uh, the uh, sexual harassment uh, and rape is increasing. So I think our, gov uh, our uh, government should forward take uh, responsible uh, for women to save their life. Okay. I do want to say, just to give you some perspective, it might be partly because Bangladesh has been, has been trying to be more in the forefront of women's uh, uh, development because of Brock and AUW. Um, so it might be reported more in Bangladesh than other developing countries. But just to give you a perspective, even when you say Bangladesh is the second highest, it was 2,000 per year because it was 40,000 over 20 years, right? That's 2,000. In the US, it's 100,000 per year and it's underreported. So, my, okay, just to give you, you know, there, uh, there are a lot of people in Bangladesh. And so I wouldn't, maybe there's, 
eight times more in America, maybe, but I mean, that would still be 16,000 compared to 100,000. So, so um, the US per capita in terms of reported, right? So the whole, the big key is whether uh, Americans report more, but it's not just that, right? It's underreported in the US also. Um, and, and so I would, so Dolana, the rest of you, I have your names down and I, we will start with you next time because um, we have five minutes left. And um, I, I did wanna just get, get straight what we're doing for next time. So, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, I have no problem. I'm also left, Professor. No, I have, yeah, no, I have your names. I have six names down here. I have Dolana, Marcia, Mahira, Puja, Toma, and Fatima. Is that right? Um, so that's, we'll start with you. Oh, Marzia, you haven't presented. No, I have you, Delana Marzia. So we'll start with you presenting your articles and then we'll do another round if you brought some poetry because next time we are gonna do Aphrodite who is the goddess of beauty and she's the goddess of the arts. And so it's, it's an interesting juxtaposition because on the one hand, the goddess of the arts would be poetry, but poetry about women being victimized is um, not what you associate with Aphrodite, right? So Aphrodite um, loves beauty and she's also the vision carrier. And so the thing to think about with Aphrodite, and then, you know, it's just interesting to have Persephone the victim and all this extensive vulnerability of women, right? Any one day in your life, you could get raped, it would change your life. That's, I remember when I'm raising daughters, right? So in the US, my gosh, there I would teach this and people would say, well, men get raped too, you know? And I'd have these students, well, you know, women rape men, blah, blah. And first of all, men do get raped, but often they get raped by men, excuse me, but, you know, 5%. So if you have a baby girl and she has 20 times higher percentage of getting raped, that doesn't matter. I mean, I cannot believe how even my female students are willing to defend men on these issues that drives me nuts. Um, but anyway, so next time we'll have, um, we'll finish up with Persephone and then we'll start with Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, but it's so different than the stereotype of the goddess who is the, you know, is uh, sexually arousing to men, right? Beauty means you can turn a guy on. And that is not what uh, Aphrodite was. And it's not the role that she ought to be playing. Um, so Mahira, did you have something you want to ask? Yeah, ma'am, uh, recently I was watching a TV show where a man told that it's not only the case that women are raped in marriage. marriage. Men are also raped in marriage and also in workplaces where female bosses are um, casting couch type of situation. Is that true or? Well, it's maybe, uh, maybe there's only 20 times more women that get raped by men, right? Maybe, yeah, if, yeah I mean, there's some, it's just, it's way out of perspective. Is that, I mean, if you have a baby, and you have a boy, are you really worried he's going to get raped compared to a girl? Mm -hmm. you know, she has 20 times more likelihood. And so you have to, have, it's very important because this stuff is emotional. And students hear about, gee, some women rape men. Oh, well, now it's so even. It's not even. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then 
do they get public? You know, do the women who rape men tend to get publicized more? Do they get trashed more? But they get used by people who want to say, oh, you see, it's the same. And those feminists are, you know, just crazy, uh, raging feminists. You see, women can rape too. It's so different. And it's always women in positions of power. Those are those women like Athena that will defend the patriarchy and make life harder for women. So, you know, let's get, let's get some perspective, learn to be a critical thinker, even though this stuff is pretty emotional, you can stand back and think about it. Why would the, the ones between 11 and 15 get reported? And if that's most of them, that isn't necessarily where most of the rapes are. That's where the ones that get public are because of the family stake in getting the girl married, right? So you just have to, you have to think about the statistics, right? Okay, so anyway, we'll see you next time and I'll put Aphrodite on and we'll, we'll, we'll combine it. It'll be an interesting combination of the victim and then the lover of beauty at the same time. Um, uh